Okay, so I'm Brian Christensen. Um, I'm a software engineer. I work on Mala. And today we want to talk about um, SLAs through standing reservations, only preemption, and job templates. So, um, just to mention too, so first, first half of the half of this, I'm going to talk, and then we'll have Matt Warwick from um, from Matt Ishmael, Matt Ishmael, or Warwick. Yeah. So he'll come up and talk about more fair share things at his slides after the. So um, what I kind of wanted to do is just give a couple of customer scenarios that I've seen um, be done. Um, just kind of give a scenario of some requirements. Say this is our this is our organization, our company. And these are just some things that we want that we have some requirements for and that we want to provide through MOA. So in the in the group you could have Say we're a university and we have all these different professors or different organizations that want to buy in. They want to buy their own set of hardware, but also want it to be able, they don't want them to go to waste. They want them to be a part of the, the school pool of them. So, um, so they can buy their own hardware, but they have first dibs on their, they have dibs on their hardware, um, like killing off other things. And so, if, and then if they're not using their node, um, everybody can have access to it. So all users could get access to it. Uh, these these owners of these nodes, they they'll gravitate to their own nodes, um, and they can preempt their own preempt others off their own nodes. Like uh, if they need resources and someone's on their own node, they'll they'll get those by knocking off the others. Um, you can exclusively run on those nodes. By default, you would you would spill over onto other nodes. But if you wanted to run exclusively on your nodes, we can show you how to uh, lock yourself into those. Uh, the shared nodes. There's there's another group of a pool of nodes that are just sitting there that anybody has access to, uh, whether you're you bought it or not, and. Uh, there's a couple shared nodes that are set aside, you know, during the day you get a lot of the, the professors that just need to get on quick and do some debugging on their on their code. And so we're going to set aside um, a couple nodes uh, Monday through Friday just during eight to five to allow them to get on quickly and do interactive work and get off. So and then uh, another thing is we want to promote. Say we got a big crane, a big uh, capability cluster. We want, we want to push this thing. So, um, and we're going to. Um, so we want to promote larger jobs with higher priority, and smaller jobs we don't care about them as much. And um, I just want to mention, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And you can remember my name. Hi. Sorry, and what? Here, and Andy. What, what's your same name? Yeah, what's my name? Oh, Brian Christensen. Okay, T-shirt. Brian Christensen. We'll see if I can get off one. Okay. Um, so the first set is this. I just labeled out. These are the first five bullets of requirements that we want to do, and we can accomplish this through standing reservation. So, um, so our first standing reservation. I'll, I'll show you my MOAC CFG here in a second, but um, so, so I have these set of nodes, and they all start with bill. So I have a host list that's just it's using a regular expression. So my my node names are bill underscore zero zero one and bill underscore zero zero two. We'll see that in a second. But because it's a regular expression, it's just going to get all nodes that have bill on them, and um, we're going to say. But this thing is just going to last forever. The reservation is never going to go away. Uh, this is how we mark the mark the ownership of these nodes of the standing reservation. And we've got a, we've got an account done with account CFG, so that way um, we can have multiple people on this account in this project. 
And anybody that gets into this account can preempt anybody that's not in that account, account and knock them off. And um, turning on this flag, the owner preempts, that allows them to kill. <coughs> anybody that allows the owner to knock off other jobs that are So, and then our other, um, we wanted to say that all users have access to these nodes. But we don't want them, we want them to avoid these nodes. So you'll notice that there's a little dash. That's giving negative affinity to this reservation. So these, these jobs are going to um, avoid these nodes. And then we also want to give access to Bill's account, and we want him to gravitate to these nodes. So we're going to give it a plus for positive affinity. So that plus can come in here. Yeah. Yeah. So this represents anybody that's not built. Yeah. Okay. So every user. Okay. I'll and yeah. yeah. And so this is defining the ACL, the access control list of the reservation. So these two are defining who can get in there. And yeah. Any questions on that? <coughs> so let me show you. So kind of want to demo this. We'll just run into a few of these things. We're going to run show show list dash n and then back dash r and uh, show that Bill's job has identity to its nodes and all this fun stuff. So we'll jump into the, the demo. Um, okay. So you'll notice okay, the font. I hope the font is good. Um, okay, so I have like that. Uh, so those are my notes. Uh, I apologize, I didn't make them better. Than me, but just think one day in G1, I like, heard. Sorry, brain fart. Um, So we're setting our preempt policy just so it'll cancel into every queue. And of course account access is just so that everybody has to require an account. They can't get into anything. Um, okay, so we've got a bill user and a John user, and they are they're in the bills account and John's account. So this bill knows so you'll see everything that I had in the in, in the slide, but except for this, just the account CFT, build account. I'm just putting build in the account. And, and then I duplicate the same thing for John. So, so that's the configuration. So let's become, so we're going to be build, and we're going to submit a, we just look at build job. I'm just going to submit a a four proc job, that's going to get it on uh, each node is four procs, and so it's just going to consume one, one node. Um, this is something that not everybody understands at first, it might not be as clear, but nodes aren't nodes by default. Nodes are procs. So if you ever want nodes to be really nodes, then you turn on the job node match policy of exact nodes. You know, um, that's something usually confuses people at first. Um, okay, so Bill Jobs, we're just going to get. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. You get a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want white or black? Black. Yeah. Why can it outside that person? Okay. Um, okay. So we'll notice here that um, Okay, we've got them right. So this was a build job, and if you look at this output, I can highlight these things. So show res dash n is showing all the nodes with the reservations on them. So this is John 001, and it has John 14 reservation on it. You also see pool. So here's our pool of nodes. Um, <coughs> so you'll see the first two nodes. They have the interactive that interactive um, reservation. That are only going to, we'll talk about that in a second. And um, build nodes. And we submitted a job, which was job 95, and 95 got on build 002. So we know that he gravitated to his node, so just to prove that point, so that it actually works. Um, so we're going to, it's the same job, pretty much. So now, John's job, this job is planned on John 002. So now, uh, what if I'm not an older node? Or what if I'm not Bill or John? I'm going to submit a job with myself. And just some four prop jobs. So you'll notice now, pool 004 showed up because it didn't have a reservation before. So jobs are pretty much reservations. But uh, 97 is showing up on pool 004, and if we spend another one, and because I'm not Bill or John, I didn't go to their nodes, I went to extra resources. And so that's, you know, 98 went there as well. Or it went to pool 003. Now if I spend another job, I'm going to start filling, into, filling onto the other one. So this one would have gone to build 001 for uh, 99. So now, if I commit another job and Bill, Bill's job, Bill's nodes are all full, so it's going to fill up on John. John has one extra node. So 100 went right here on John. Now, um, so what if I, so some, I know I've got a job for myself on, on Bill 001, but I want to get resources on my node. So I'm going to do the job. And we should see 99 go away. So you'll see 101 hanging out right there. And if we look at, Next job, that is me, 101. You'll see that 101 has preemptive. And I forget, what was the job that we did? 99. Okay. So if we look at job 99, down, hill, down, down here he says he, he was canceled. So um, now say, I'm just going to cancel off. Uh, So I'm going to cancel off the two jobs that I have on this pool node. So 98 and 97. Okay, so now we don't see the pool here with 003 and pool here with 004. Um, okay, so now, say I'm John and I want my, my job to, to run on my node only. So it's just my node's job. I add on this dash L EDB rep, 
for advanced reservation. And that says I have to run in this Jones reservation. Um, if I do, you'll notice here when we look at the John, so all the, this Bill's dot 13 and John's dot 14, they're, they're reservations of the standing reservation. And the standing reservation has a, um, it, so the reservation group is called Bill's or John's. I can actually do HB res John sub 14, but John sub 14 is going to end in a day. Or, well, we did period it equals infinity, so it's never going to go away. But if you restart it or something, it might come back as a different number. So you can always just use the the standing reservation name, and it always that way you just always have a, a name. That's so my so I wanted eight nodes in that job. Um, I wanted eight nodes, or eight rocks, two nodes. And, but I don't have any on my, there's no available space on mine. So I should just get blocked. why we can't get on there. John, it's just because there's some, there's, it's busy, someone's on there. Uh, one and two are available, but we can't get it. We have to have this interactive that 16 reservation. And same with the others. Okay. Any questions there? So just to, to have the reservation move. So by default, if a node goes down in the, res in the standing reservation, Moab's checking every iteration and saying, hey, do I have any down nodes in this reservation? If there are, it's going to try and, it's going to try to fill that task count every time. And so it'll try to move it to fulfill its request. Um, but we can talk after. Let's talk after. And, yeah. Um, so. Job one or two is blocked by job one hundred. What is job one hundred one built to us? Can we be canceled by John? Let's see if we can do anything. Yeah, one of these is John's job, and so we can't. You can't kill John's job. No, uh, he's killing. He'd be killing his own job. So John has um, John has ninety six. But Bill has 100, and that's what's blocking the job. Right. So why can't John John can't. John's job, 96 right here, is on his own note. And he's wanting two notes. So he's wanting uh, John 001 and John 002. He's got to do without him. So he can't kill his own job to get on to uh, We don't believe in cannibalism. But, you know. So he, he can't kill, um, he can't, his job is preventing him from getting So if he only asked for one note, he would kill his job. Yeah, so, yeah, correct. That brings me to my other question. Yeah. Um, when Bill asked to run and both notes were full, but then when John knows wasn't, he ran on John's note, but John comes along and gets that note to get him potentially killed. Right. Whereas if Bill had instead preempted the job that was running on his note, is and try to gravitate to that. He would still be running. Right. Yeah. So and how do you alter that behavior? Is there a way to alter that? Um, so I thought about that as well. I saw him go up. Um, I and I believe it's because I started thinking through all the code. And I believe it's because. 
because Juan sees, hey, there are still available resources. I'm going to try to get him on these first. Um, there's, I'll get him on this. But if you wanted him to always, one way around that is to do the ADB rest. To say, try staying on your job. If we did the ADB rest, that would potentially, that could kill us. I think he would try to kill that, that job. Um, we could play with it after. Just a t-shirt for you, and a t-shirt for you. Uh, oops, sorry, in the copy. Okay. 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 So next one. Okay. The shared notes. This is kind of the interactive job. So uh, another reservation. Um, so we have our pool notes, and we only want two of these. So task count by default. Um, it means all the all the props on the nodes, and this job adder list equals interactive. When you submit an interactive job, um, the interactive there's an interactive attribute put on the job, and this is defined in an ACL, saying uh, we only have one ACL. My medium says between seven and four, and my small one says between three and one, and um, Giving everybody access to all these these QoSs, and then the large job can get a ten, uh, get a priority of ten, five, you know, medium five, and small one. Okay. So if we look at so my large job requests eight props, my medium job. Plus five cross my small job is two cross. So if I just do this one, let me see them all. So this is that first one, large job. But so our, our, so this one he requested eight eight props. So he got into the large queue, QI. Uh, this one requested five tasks, so he got in the medium queue. This one requested two two tasks, he got in the small queue, QI. If we were to look at the priority, um, let's see, 10, 5, and 1. So we've promoted the, the largest job of priority. So um, I'll defer questions for now because uh, I want to give Matt, Matt some time. I believe we're good on time. Um, but ask me some questions after. We'll let Matt speak to this. 